PC middle schoolers and parents of middle schoolers, we know it's a crazy season right now. And I just wanted to tell you real quick about the devotional video that you're about to watch just so you have an idea of what's going on. In general, our team's just been praying about and thinking about over the past week. What are some ways that we can come alongside and encourage and just continue to do what we do and what we're all about in this very unique season? So one, we're going to continue to try to stay connected in relationships through texting, phone calls, and some other means. Uh, so please stay connected with us. We're going to try to do that with you because we care about you. We love our relationships with you, and we want to stay connected as best we can. Secondly, some of our small groups are going to attempt to go virtual so you'll be hearing from your particular small group leaders on how your small group is going to try to stay connected during this. Some of you are going to attempt things like Zoom or FaceTime meetings and, and maybe some other ideas just depending on your group, your age, and things like that. But the third thing we're going to try to do, and that's what I want to introduce you to real quickly here, is our team's just going to try to be sending out quick devotional videos every now and then throughout the weeks just so you can have your mind on scripture. So the video that you're about to watch is very simple. It's not flashy at all, but I just think the best thing that we can be doing in this season is using the extra time to just soak up being in God's word, meeting with him, hearing what he has to say through scripture. And uh, especially in this time of uncertainty and fear, the Bible speaks to our condition, to our situation. I got this idea from one of my friends who's a pastor in New York City. I saw him doing this same idea and uh, I just talked to him about it and wanted to steal it from him, so I didn't come up with it. But it's very simple. You're going to see a video, and all you're going to see on the screen is just the page of Scripture. You'll hear my voice talking about it. I'm just going to be drawing on some stuff, circling it, making some observations. They'll be pretty quick, about five minutes each when we throw these out there. And the idea is that it's nothing flashy. We just want your eyes on Scripture. So based on feedback, we'll tweak some things. We'll continue to evolve, but that's what you're about to see and uh, we hope that it's an encouragement to you in this season. If there's anything we can do to serve you or encourage you in this season in particular, please do not hesitate to reach out to me or our middle school team. We love you guys, and we hope to see you again very soon. This coronavirus season when we're dealing with fear and uncertainty. I'm in Psalm 27, 1 through 3. Let's see what David does with his fear. He starts in verse 1. He says, The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Now, here's why that is important. is because if you're like me in a season of uncertainty and fear, like the one that we're in right now, I am tempted to start in other places. So that can be the news. I want to know what's going on in the news and really camp out there, spend a lot of time there. It can be what other people are saying. So I want to spend a lot of time focused on what others have to say about it. I could just be in my own mind and I'm just thinking through it thinking out what's going to happen. And it's not that we ignore these three things. That's not what David's saying. But instead, David says, hey, I'm not going to start there. I'm actually going to start with God. I'm going to start with the Lord. I'm going to let him and who he is, what he's like, speak in to everything else that I'm dealing with. So this is what he says about the Lord. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? So here's three things that he tells us about who God is. So one is he is his light. So I don't know if you've ever been in a dark room and you're, you know, maybe bumping into things. You can't see where you're going. When you turn on light, light guides you. You're able to see what's going on around you. It gives direction. He said, hey, that's what the Lord does for me. When I can't see, God gives me guidance and direction. Not only that, but the Lord is his salvation. So David uh, didn't know fully the way that God would be a salvation. We know something that David didn't know, and that's this, that God would later send Jesus to die on a cross for us, and he is our salvation because of that he is our rescuer. We know that he loves us enough to save us. That's what we know about the Lord. Now, the third thing, he says that the Lord is the stronghold of his life. So think about it like this. If you are caught in a rainstorm, all right, it's a heavy rainstorm, there's a lot of lightning, what you need to do is you've got to find shelter. You want to find something that you can trust to block you from the rain. You want to find a refuge. And that's what David means when he says the Lord is the stronghold of his life, is that when the storms come in and things are crazy, David is going to seek refuge in God. So these three things are true about the Lord for David. And because those things are true, David says, whom shall I fear? 
Whom shall I be afraid? He says it twice. So this is what David knows. And this is what David is telling us is that because these things are true about God, because he starts with who God is, he knows that he doesn't have to be afraid. Even in a season of fear and uncertainty, he doesn't have to be afraid. But here's what's really cool about what David does, is David does not just keep these things in a Bible study or in church or in his head. He actually brings them into his life. So it's not like he is just stuck in this church here. He learns these things about God. And he just keeps it there. Instead, what he does is he brings them out into his daily life. And we see that because of verse 2 and verse 3. He says, When evildoers assail me to eat of my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. So this is what David's saying. He's not just taking the truths of verse one and letting them stay in his head, he is actually applying them to situations in real life. And because he is doing that, he applies it to a very real situation. He says, even though an army encamp against me, that's a bad thing. That's not a good thing if an army is encamped against you. He says, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, that's also a bad thing. That's not a good situation. But he focuses on who God is and he can have confidence because he knows who God is. So this is why I tell us that is because the same thing is true for us today. Is that if it's true, if an army is encamping against you, or if wars are rising against you, it is true in coronavirus season and any other thing that be, can be causing us fear and uncertainty. So what we need to do is we need to ask the exact same thing that David is. How does this truth in verse one of who God is apply to our own life today? How does it apply to our own situations today. So this is what I want us to do. This is what I want to encourage us to do, especially in this season. I want you, when you get a second, to just write the Lord on a piece of paper. You can do it on your phone. You can do it with family. You can do it by yourself. And I just want you to write words that describe them. That can be loving. It can be things like powerful. It can be anything you want. But I just want you to fuel your mind with things that are true about God and then think through how do these things that are true, how do they apply to your life today and what you're going through with fear and uncertainty, especially in the seasons. Hope that encourages you with Psalm 27, one through three. We'll be back to do this again with some more scripture another time in the week.